Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warplanes and this time we're going to take a look at the tier 8 American heavy fighter the XF5U Pancake or Flapjack or Flying Squirrel <laughs> or anything else that this weird odd looking plane was known as. So this is indeed a real life plane. Um, it was designed to actually or it was planned to be able to uh, go from aircraft carriers to high altitude very very quickly and that's why uh, this technology used large propellers and this weird looking airframe to try to uh, revolutionize the way to get into the sky or gain altitude as quickly as possible that was the whole purpose and in testing it actually did pretty darn well it was a little bit unstable but with any plane uh, any prototype plane there are bugs there are glitches there are things in there that need to be slightly improved so after they kinda got the prototype worked out it actually was pretty safe and a, a very well made design however uh, with the end of World War II and uh, the beginning of the jet age as well as other aircraft that just did better I'm pretty sure at this point the Corsair uh, they decided they were able to fold the wings up and they were able to successfully launch the Corsair from uh, carriers and I I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly uh, they just wanted Corsairs instead of this thing so and it, it, because it was such an odd design, it did take a little while to get the kinks worked out of it. Uh, and the development for it took a little bit longer because it was such a unique design. But let's quick take a look at what Wargaming says about the history. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what the history is. I, I thought this was a cool plan. I've watched documentaries on it. So I'm going off memory here. But I'm pretty sure that's what it was. It's an experimental U.S. Navy fighter. So yes, indeed, Navy with unique configuration. Never saw combat due to the introduction of jet-powered aircraft. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> was I right or was I right? Alright. So anyway, that is the history of the, of the flapjack, the pancake, the flying squirrel, whatever the heck you want to call it. Uh, and a lot of people are like, ooh, this is an ugly plane. To me, I love unique. I like different. I like designs that... Um, put to the test or combat or challenge there we go that's the word I'm looking for challenge standards or challenge tra challenge tradition uh, things that are unique so to me I think this looks kinda cool and the design for it was pretty neat um, hearing about the history of how they had the a much smaller scaled version of this plane uh, testing the plausibility of it uh, it was actually quite an interesting little thing and honestly the technology you see here for all intents and purposes is kind of the same technology you see on helicopters uh, with the massive blades and stuff like that which gives you a lot of thrust but anyway that's enough on the history uh, let's quick take a look at what Wargaming has to say about the aircraft this aircraft uh, has powerful auto cannon armament effective against aircraft with high survivability so if we do take a look at the upgrades here you'll notice that it has 420s uh, we do not quite yet have the 420s unlocked but they are very good so the 420s I'll pop up the machine guns as well the 650 cals and you can see that very clearly you absolutely want the 20s uh, substantially more damage per second slightly slower rate of fire but the range is substantially higher so these guns are glorious the 20s feel amazing on the plane and uh, yeah it is very good the guns work well uh, they make short work of anything they can go through bombers they can go through GAs absolutely no problem Next, it's got good sur survivability, but large dimensions, and a vulnerable engine. Well, the engine is 
twice the size of the plane, so I guess it would make sense that the, pl the engine is vulnerable. <laughs> um, but I, s I don't s think I've ever seen one of these planes that did not have a vulnerable engine, so take that with a grain of salt. Um, I haven't personally tested this plane a ton, so I can't really tell you, especially not after uh, the most recent patch. And yes, uh, the next point, high airspeed and long lasting boost. High airspeed is indeed true with uh, an altitude or an airspeed performance. A cruise speed of 364, not too bad. Boost speed, 500 miles per hour. Um, when you're packing over 500 miles per hour on a prop plane, uh, that is very good. You're going to be competing with the 262. You're going to be competing with any of the fast fastest planes of the tier. Uh, heck, you're even faster than uh, many tier 9 planes. So, the airspeed is phenomenal on this plane. Um, boost duration, you have 30 seconds of boost, so again, that's not too shabby. Um, for a heavy fighter, I guess you kind of expect a high amount of boost, but it is still very good. Uh, and max dive speed, 528. So, it is exceptional. Great aircraft in terms of speed. It's got low effective and maneuvering combat. If we take a look at the maneuverability here, it's got a rating of 43. It takes 13.1 seconds to turn 360 degrees, which may sound terrible, uh, but it's actually pretty decent for a heavy fighter. Uh, you are more maneuverable than most heavy fighters, and especially if you start specializing your plane for maneuverability and focusing on maneuverability, you are going to be just as maneuverable as some multi rolls and when you're packing that kind of maneuverability with that crazy of out or airspeed and uh, the 420s you're a force to be reckoned with absolutely uh, next uh, also ready roll 100, 100 degrees per second uh, not very good but you're not really gonna need to use that a whole lot so yeah and then a bunch of other random stats that I don't really care about Next, it's got effective and mid-altitude combat and in destroying small, small amounts of ground targets. That's where I kind of disagree with it. Um, it is fine in mid-altitude, but this thing really excels at high altitude. Uh, dealing with bombers is literally no problem. Um, but you, this plane can really be put at any altitude you want it to be. The higher you are, the more planes are going to cost to stall out. So balance it out and if you can find that balance find that uh, perfect balance I suppose I don't have a better word uh, it's it really does make it work pretty well and then in destroying small amounts of ground targets you do have 20s and they are fairly decent so destroying soft targets is a possibility I don't recommend it if you really want to destroy ground targets, well, you have bombs and rockets. Bombs or rockets, rather. Um, and if we take a look at this, you get two 1,000 pound bombs. And these also go on the F7F, so you should have them researched already. They are fantastic bombs, and uh, for some reason, the American planes have some of the largest, most deadly bombs and rockets in the game. So you can get your 2,000 pound bombs. That's definitely the uh, way I would personally go. But you also have a choice of these two tiny Tims. So yes, these tiny Tims, they do have uh, 1,500 damage less than the bombs, and they do have a smaller blast radius. But at the same time, I've heard so many good things about these rockets. They're very good against ground targets. However, the Tiny Tims, I hear, have their best effectiveness is coming toward human control GAs and shooting them at the ground right by the GA and destroying them. That's where these Tiny Tims do the best because they have a substantial blast radius for uh, rockets. They're absolutely massive rockets. So I'm actually going to mount them real quick just to show you how ridiculous those things are. These rockets don't look like rockets at all. They look like torpedoes. They're so freaking massive. Uh, 
But yeah, they are crazy good rockets. You do only have two of them, so destroying targets in the air, not so easy. But I hear if you get the hang of it, you can just rocketeer GAs by slapping the ground in front of them pretty darn easily. So go ahead, do some experimentation with it. Me personally, I just like the convenience of bombs, but there is 100% uh, uh, argument material, or sorry, material for using the Tiny Tims. So, with that out of the way, that's about it for statistics wise. This plane has, oh, one, se one second, let's quick take a look at the altitude performance. I forgot to do that. Its altitude performance is 56, but it's got a service ceiling of, oh my word, 13,123 feet. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, Wargaming, uh, but this should be high altitude. <laughs> when you have an altitude performance of 13,000 feet, you are a high altitude fighter. So, let's do a quick recap. You're ultra fast. You have good maneuverability for a heavy fighter. You have an absolute crap ton of ordnance potential. You have 420s, which are glorious, and you have a perfect altitude performance. Hmm. Something sounds strange to you guys? No, not at all. Totally balanced, totally fair. Um, this is another one of those super, super way overpowered tier 8 premium, or not even premiums, just tier 8s. And they really haven't done any rebalancing whatsoever since update 2.0. I don't think they ever will. Let's not expect that. But what is important is that this plane is fun. So if you want something that's fun, get this plane. <laughs> and that's really about all there is to it. Uh, yeah, it, it is just that great. It is glorious. When you have a platoon, or sorry, a flight of a pancake, flapjack, squirrel, whatever you want to call it, uh, and then an RB-17, you are basically an unstoppable force. There's nothing the enemy team can do to you if you actually try your hardest. So, yeah, clap, clap, great job. Uh, this is one of the examples that Wargaming needs to rebalance it because this plane is better than the 262. It is better than the P-1056, I think that's what it is. Uh, yeah, and the, in ways, it's better than the Dornier 335. Uh, if you have the option of pl flying this or the Dornier 335, I think I'd always go with the Pancake. It is just that much better. Um, does it tell you the re respawn rate of your bombs? That I don't know. Let's see if it tells us. Bombs and rockets. Uh, resupply time, 180 seconds. So it is fairly long, uh, but it's not too bad when you have two massive 1,000 pound bombs. Uh, let's quick take a look at what the respawn rate of the Tiny Tims are. 180 seconds. Okay. Cool, cool. So yeah. It's it's decent. Three minutes uh, for reload. It's it's a it's a, a long a long reload, but it's it's okay. These you won't need to use a ton of them. Uh, you because they're so big, you could actually get bombardier with them if you wanted to. So anyway, that's about it. This plane is perfect. It is perfection. There's nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing. And if you spec it up for maneuverability, which I do recommend, and I'm not going to go through the um, equipment that you should put on there because I simply don't have enough experience with it. I don't play this update, this patch, so I can't really go over that. However, we will quick go over the service department and uh, consumables. No, we won't. Actually, I lied. We're not even going to bother with that. I'll let you guys figure it out. I'm sure you guys can figure it out. Um, but yeah, anyway. You do get a paint scheme. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> this is a flying squirrel. <laughs> um, and yet, as you can clearly see, it is a flying squirrel paint scheme, and I think that's amazing. So if you do want something fun, uh, this paint scheme looks glorious. So by all means, put it on if you have it. Um, but the free one, eh, it's all right. 
um, but at least you're able to mount your beta sticker which is I think the most important thing and with that being said let us first talk about I'm on my brother's account because I actually don't own this plan as I think I've already said and the replay that we're going to use for this review is actually sent in by uh, uh, Watt Clown, Watt Clown. Uh, that's his YouTube name I don't remember what his in-game name is but we will see it when the when I pop up the replay um, but my brother did have this flapjack this pancake whatever you want to call it so I came over to his account to do this review so with that being said let us jump into the replay and welcome back to the replay so we have the pleasure of watching Sibo Snake Eyes in his XF5U pancake uh, looks like his pancake is specialized and he also sent me an email with what equipment modules and uh, stuff that he has on his particular pancake so I will probably put it on screen in post-production as long as I remember uh, so that way you guys know exactly what he's running with but with that out of the way uh, let us get started he is using the tiny Tims in this battle just so you guys are all aware and this is a four sector layout this is driving me nuts get rid of the border there we go um, so a four sector layout you have two command centers a missile base and an airstrip this isn't the worst uh, layout but it's certainly not the greatest and the first thing he's going to do is come to this command center. Is that the right choice? Absolutely. Uh, it's right next to him. Get those bombers up in the air. Uh, counter the enemy bombers. And yeah, it's going to be great. So he comes down and the 20 millimeters just absolutely ruin that A6M2 air defense. Absolutely nothing they can do. Flips around and absolutely takes out the other A6M2. No problem whatsoever. Didn't quite get him, but we'll flip around and finish him off. There we go. He is using the Tiny Tims, which I would um, su suggest in the garage. It's not a bad idea, um, and they're such unique rockets. So if you do have the option and you do prefer those rockets, by all means, or rather torpedoes. <laughs> they look more like torpedoes than rockets, honestly. Let's be real here. Um, so anyway, if, if you do like those, then sure. Um, and when you do destroy uh, GAs with your rockets it is very very satisfying so absolutely good choice by his on his part after he took the command center he's just gonna go in and prevent them from having the airstrip another great move there's lots of targets here so he can get lots of points alternatively he could have gone down to the air the missile base but me personally and it looks like him as well uh, going for the airstrip is uh, the choice that he made which is just fine uh, he went head-on with that heavy fighter the other what is that pancake and there's nothing that pancake is gonna be able to do he didn't get shots um, on Sibo here but Sibo absolutely ruins him so if you guys don't know Sibo uh, his YouTube name is Watt Clown so if you do see him in the comments say thanks for sending in the replay uh, I have had this replay sitting in my inventory for some time I uh, haven't had an opportunity to record until now so I'm a little bit sorry about that but here we are anyway that out of the way uh, snake eyes I'm just gonna call you snake eyes because I don't know if I'm pronouncing the first part of the name correctly I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Sibo but anyway he's coming after this heavy fighter uh, opening fire and not a ton of damage to him but uh, we're gonna keep hitting him if you guys do notice his uh, ammunition does overheat fairly fast or the guns do overheat fairly fast but it's not too bad and they do cool down fairly quickly as well which just adds the whole power of the 20 mils he's also running a first aid kit a control trim and pneumatic restarter same setup I would use and then he had an extra engine slot so it looks like he went with uh, the premium uh, engine restarter thingy which gives you your boost back um, that premium one is currently bugged if I recall correctly where if you use it it restores all of your boost and prevents your boost from going down even after the 
consumable goes on to cool down. So right now it is broken. Um, if you do want to give it a shot, go ahead and try it out. I don't know if he has, it looks like he has the broken one, um, but he's not really using it that much. Um, unless the replay is just bugged, which is completely possible. Um, but if he presses the 4 key, I'm pretty sure that's what activates that uh, premium consumable. Um, but yeah, I don't think he's activated it, cause it's, especially when you look at the control surface trim where that's on cooldown. So I, you, you should use your uh, thing. It's not something that's just automatically active. You do have to manually activate it. Um, so yeah, use it when your boost is gone. You'll get all your boost back. It's broken right now. Anyway, that's off beside the point. After clearing out the airstrip, now he's going to come over to the command center because that's where the enemies are at. And also, uh, the, if you guys did notice, the enemies had just about taken the command center. So him coming over here and killing a couple planes over here actually reset it just enough to prevent them from having it. However, the enemies are still trying to take it. They are uh, fighting and they still haven't taken it all battle. Um, so they're fighting for it. But in either case, uh, getting back on the P-51D, absolutely no problem. The McGuire medal is already his, and getting those two kills has <laughs> reset the command center. Um, so that's great. Uh, if I was in this situation, I probably would have done the same. But at the same time, you gotta look. Oh, there's the Tiny Tim, just absolutely ruined it. Uh, so he did show off the Tiny Tim a little bit. He didn't attack anything major. Those were just kind of very soft targets. Um, I'm sure the Tiny Tims would have been able to destroy something a little bit heavier. But he just wanted to get those Tiny Tims out to keep it reset a little bit. He's got somebody on his tail. Nothing he can really do at this point. Um, he's on a boost. He can't really do anything. Use your consumable. You'll get your boost back. But he hasn't used it. Um, so anyway... And he is playing low altitude, which I don't highly recommend in the pancake, but at the same time, the pancake does everything. So, being at low altitude doesn't really matter. You can be low, medium, high, it just doesn't matter. You can perform at any altitude. And at this point, he's almost got the command center, and that's why the enemy team hasn't gotten any sectors. So, taking this command center as well might end the battle a little bit too fast for my liking. So if I was in the situation, I probably would have just gone and defended the airstrip some more, but he took the command center, no problem with that, and uh, this game is basically in the bag. At this point, he just needs to farm up as many points as he wants, because the enemy team just cannot do anything. <laughs> um, the pancake is preventing him, preventing them from being able to do anything. They almost have the airstrip. Uh, but thankfully, the enemies do not take it until uh, Snake Eyes respawns, and uh, he comes back over, and he's going to see if he can flip this airstrip back into a blue favor. That Yak-9U, unfortunately, was killed outside the cap, so it did not count, uh, and so was that 109G. But the enemy team still hasn't flipped it, so it's not a huge deal. And boom, there goes the pancake. Three very quick kills right in a row. Uh, they're all lined up, just one after the other, after the other, after the other. 15,000, 16,000 personal points. He's got the ace medal, so <laughs> he's on a roll. We got flames in the sky. It's squall line, so he has to be careful. And the P-51D is just dead. He got the Avenger. He got the Guardian. He's basically getting all the medals you can possibly get. He's gotten five kills now after he respawned, so that's not too shabby. There's a P-51 Mustang. That guy is squalled. These 20 millimeter guns are just fantastic. They do so much work. Um, this pancake is probably the best tier 8 heavy fighter in the game currently. It probably always will be because Wargaming doesn't ever change, do they? Uh, they don't rebalance vehicles at all. So, anyway. This is a fantastic plane. If you do want something fun, pick it up. Uh, they still have three sectors. The enemy has nothing. The battle's almost over. He's going over to their spawn to, you know, get a little bit more points here. He shoots at the IL-8. Oh, my word. Almost one passes the IL-8. Uh, absolutely ridiculous. He doesn't quite get the kill. He got major contribution, though. And what are we at? 597. And done battle over 
So that was a fantastic uh, display of the pancake and what you can do. He got the Conqueror, Maguire, Ace, Winged Legend, Kazub Dub, uh, what is this one? Something, Guardian, and something else. So anyway, thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for sending in the replay, Snake Eyes. If you catch them in the um, comments down below, say hi to Watt Clown uh, and thank him for sending it in. And anyway, thank you so much for sending in the replay. If you guys also have replays, send them in, and I very well may use them in a review. And with that being said, uh, send in replays to princehyrule at gmail.com. Have a great day, and I will catch you next time.